All right. As, as always, first and foremost, of course, all the learning we do should be exclusive for all the people that need extra tefillos, all the chayilim and the shvuyim and, and the, the people that are injured. Mitzvah, Shem, everything should just, you know, get back uh, to uh, the way Amishel always really wants it to be in the air to Israel and, and in all over the world. And a huge thank you to the OU for hosting this and all the multiple things that I think a lot of people <laughs> don't even know they do. You know, everyone, you, you, they're, they're, you know, WhatsApp groups and 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 there's things going around and stands there's schoolists and sukim and people are looking for things that they tell him and, and, and forty times a day and people some guy wrote me maybe we should get everybody to fast Monday and Thursday and people are looking for schoolists you know um Rav Reisman was uh, <laughs> Rashiva in in Torvadas he used to say that you know it's a shame Akharish Baruch who did not um. Did, did not give the affairs to diverse as schoolers, then everybody would have done it. We all want schoolers, right? See, but, but we forget, you know, what, what's the matter with davening? Like, da, davening is a, is a good thing. And, and, and that's what I would like to focus on. Davening is not as, as simple as it, as, as it sounds. Um, you know, they tell the story of this guy, this bruv, he's flying from like Brooklyn to Los Angeles, he's going to a chasana. And uh, he's sitting there, he's sitting on the plane, he's, he's learning Chumash, you know, he's just saying, he's telling him, he's doing his thing, and there's some guy sitting next to him, right? And he says, oh, uh, are you, are you a rabbi? He goes, yes, I, yes, I'm a rabbi. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a professor of astrophysics. So the rabbi says, that, that's, that, that's very nice. And he looks back and says, you know, so he's learning, he says, uh, he said, that's Hebrew you're reading, right? He goes, yeah, yeah, that's Hebrew. The Bible is Hebrew. So no. He says, well, you know, rabbi, I don't know a lot about, about Judaism, but from what I understand, you can like just sum the whole thing up as like, love your neighbors, you love yourself, right? And Rev looks at him and says, you know what? I don't know a lot about astrophysics, but I think you can sum it all up with twinkle, twinkle, little star. We tend to take complicated things and just like boil it down. Davening, you up with you daven. Here's what I'd like to do for the next few weeks. Well, really only for this week, because the Mitzvah of Mashiach will be here by then, and then he'll be giving short instead of me. But in the odd, chance if that chatzron doesn't happen, right? And you're, <laughs> you're stuck with me, right? What what I would like to do is I would like to, this for the next few weeks, I'd like to discuss elements of fila because it's really complicated. How does it work? Why should it work? Why should it make a difference? Hashem knows what we want anyways, right? How does it help for people who aren't davening and don't believe in the stuff anyways? So, so how does it help them, Right? How does the whole feel of business work? And every day, every class in Mirtha Shem, I want to take a little bit of David. And instead of going to the things that like we don't know because we rarely say them, and going to Tehillim, which everybody's talking about, I want to do Birchas HaShachar. We all say Birchas HaShachar, 15 Birchas HaShachar. Well, I thought you about, what can you say about Birchas HaShachar? Watch. <laughs> We're going to do that. That's what I want to do. Instead of dramatically adding to the davening that we do, for which everybody probably has, and everyone's doing their extra thing, how about taking the davening that we always do and just say it a little more intelligently and, and knowing what we're doing? That's the plan of attack. So for the next few classes, we're going to take one small issue about fila and try and explain it. Then we'll do one or two of the birchas shachar. Then we'll go to the next topic every week, next topic, and the next few birchas shachar. That's the plan. Let's let's see how we do. So let's start like this. And we got to start with the most crucial part, right, of tefillah, which is why should it make a difference? I'm judged. If I deserve X, I'll get X. If I deserve, I dive into a or I want to win $20 million in the lottery. If I'm supposed to win $20 million in the lottery, I'm going to win $20 million in the lottery. If I'm not supposed to win 20 million bucks, then I'm not going to win, win it. Nagging HaKadosh Baruch Hu about it. Why, why does nagging him help? What it's like he doesn't know? Oh, oh I didn't really want to win the lottery. Oh, thanks for point. Oh, you you want to be cured from your cancer? I didn't know that. Why don't you just speak up, man? What Baruch Hu knows what's going on. What do you think? I don't want to be cured. I got to ask him. Right? He doesn't know that. And gave me the cancer, and he knows how long cancer is going to last, Pastor Schultz, and whatever it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be, and just begging and nagging, why, why would that make a difference? You get what you, you get what you deserve. Forget Sadiq Varela, 
right? But you know, basic system for getting right. It doesn't look like we get what we deserve, but we, we believe we, we get what you deserve. So if I deserve it, I deserve it. If I don't, I don't, right? If I'm supposed to find a job, I'll find a job. I'll find a job. So the broker wants me to find a job, right? I'm not before he wants me to find a job. And it's bugging him saying, can you please find me a job? Go, can you find me a job? If I was a country, guy, I know you need a job. I'm stupid. I'm God, okay? Right? You'll get it when you're supposed to get it. That's our question. Chats like this based on Rev Dessler. We've mentioned this before. What do we do when we die? Yes, it's true. We're judged every day. Every day we're judged. I, if we're judged every day, what do we need Rosh Hashanah for? Very famous Rosh Hashanah question. Maybe we'll talk about it. Next Rosh Hashanah, right? And that's why it's such a fa- it's the classic Rosh Hashanah question. What are we doing? We're judged every day. So what's going on in Rosh Hashanah? We judge every day. Coach Barker looks at you, judge every day. We have better days, we have worse days. Coach Barker goes, okay, what's going to be with this guy today? What's going to be with Feige Mom? Where is he holding? What does he deserve? Got more mitzvahs. I got less mitzvahs. So I want to win $20 million. Coach Barker looks at me and says, Feige Mom, you don't deserve $20 million. And I completely understand that, right? What, what am I getting? So, so what do I accomplish my job? Well, what do I accomplish my job? Yeah, I do more mitzvahs. I get it. I gave many shit to duck. So my balance sheet is changed. That's like if I'm your balance sheet is not, is not good enough to win twenty million dollars yet. Oh, I gave more tzedaka. Uh, I, I did keep it away. Uh, I did a chesed. I visited people in the hospital. Oh, oh, oh and that balance is changing. Oh, good. Bam, bam. You know, pile on the mitzvahs, and he said, "You're a different guy." So I come to looks at me today and says, "Hey, that's a very different fight about. Look at the whole balance. Wow. Well, maybe. But, but why just why just ask it? What what is that?" Because what do we do when we dive in? When we dive in, when we dive in, we are acknowledging the fact that it's a Kodesh Baruch who runs the show. I've said this before. Our unfortunately favorite Baruch and Shalom Eslik. How did you say that? If Hashem heals us, we'll be healed. Well, yeah, duh. Obviously, if Hashem heals us, we'll be healed. The translation of that sentence in Shmona Esrei should be said with the following inflection. Refoinu Hashem, the Rafe. It's a statement. If Hashem heals us, then we get healed. If Hashem don't heal us, we don't get healed. We have to establish, we're not going to rely on miracles. We all know that we've been through this a thousand times. You got to buy bulletproof rest, you got to put your bulletproof rest on 100%. You got to go to the doctor. If you have a savings account, you should try and make one. No, you should not smoke 20 cigarettes a day. But the proclamation that Rifoeno Hashem, only if Hashem heals us will we be healed. If Hashem blesses us with Parnassah, we'll have Parnassah. If he don't, nothing will help. Nothing will help. Nothing will help. Proclaiming that, announcing that, brings you closer to Hashem. That makes you closer to Hashem. You're, you're putting yourself in his hands. That changes your balance sheet. So when I ask a coach of Please, I can remember, you know, you could give me $20 million. And if you don't want to give me $20 million, it will never, ever, ever, ever happen. But if you do, it will happen, right? I, I, I need a job following the want ad. I'm, I'm sending in resumes. I can remember, but it's only up to you. I'm just doing what I got to do. Coach Berkel, it's totally up to you. You announce that. You proclaim that. You, you've changed the balance. In your Kadosh Tame balance, in your good deeds, bad deeds balance, you're a different person. And you can wake up the next morning on a coach of who looks at you and says, well, the fight of yesterday, it didn't deserve $20 million. But the fight of today, with those extra tefillah, look at his kedusha, look at his neshama, look how much he put himself in my hand, look how close he's become to me. That's a fight of that deserves $20 million. Now, they have not. <laughs> but we, we keep on trying. That's how it changes it. That's how the difference it makes. And that's why Baruch HaTar Hashem, yes, most people translate Baruch HaTar Hashem, you're Hashem, you're blessed. Very difficult translation. What do you mean Hashem is blessed? What does that mean? Go with Shem Shifal Hirsch, many of the deeper Mephorshim, of course, say comes from the word source, spring, underground spring. Baruch HaTar Hashem, you Hashem are the source of everything. Every time you make a Baruch HaTar Hashem, you are the source of everything. And you are Borah Hashanah. And your faith, you're the Rofei Cholin, right? And you're the Machai Mesin. 
right? And you are the Chonein Lodom Das, and you're the one that does it. I got to study. I got to review. So I want to understand things. But you, Hashem, are the source of wisdom, and, and I will be as smart or dumb as the Yorkshire Park will want me to be, right? And I will be as rich, as poor as you want me to be, and that changes the balance, and you're on a new spiritual level. The Vaultic. Eh, but how, how, how does that help the people that are not dominant? They're not changing their spiritual level. Their balance sheet stays the same. They ain't doing nothing. They're at least not davening. So I'm davening. So I'm closer to our chef. Uncle Charlie, who's in a coma, ain't doing nothing. So I'm, how does that help for him? Famous rule. You get somebody else to do a mitzvah, you get hard for that. You have a neighbor who they don't waste their time Thursday evenings, doesn't do anything. But Thursday nights is not in your community. They, you know, they package packages for Tobacco Shop. Shabbos. They're putting packages together for Thailand. Why don't you come along? Nah, nah, nah. Come on, come on, last week. Come on along. Then we sit at home, you're doing nothing. Come, you'll help and be a chesed. Oh, okay, I'm going to come along. She gets the chesed. She does a message. She does the chesed. She packages packages for, for Tobacco Shabbos. She uh, put together stuff for Thailand. Whatever she did, she helped out. It's a community. She did good. She gets chesed. You get schar because you got somebody else to do it. Without you, she never would have done it. And then for you, you get the schar of getting somebody else to do a mitzvah. You convince someone to buy a $10 raffle ticket, which they normally wouldn't have done. They just gave 10 bucks at Sadaka, which they really never would have done had you not bothered them. They get mitzvah sadaka. You get the mitzvah of getting somebody else to do sadaka. How does it help Uncle Charlie? Would you have sent the extra pair of tillin if Uncle Charlie wouldn't be in a coma? No, Uncle Charlie would do fine. I wouldn't have said this extra pair of tillin. So Uncle Charlie got you to do an extra pair of tillin. How did he do that? By being in a coma. But I bet he got you to do it. it. Thanks to him that he said the extra pair of tillin. You wouldn't be so nice to your mother-in-law. There wouldn't be a war going on and on. Thought the soldiers were in danger, would you? But you took it by yourself. You're going to call your mother-in-law every other day. Take a really deep breath and have a really nice conversation. And that's what the Chayalim should be saying. They got you to do that. How? putting themselves in harm's way and running around with rocket launchers. But, but they got you to do it. They wouldn't be doing that. If everything be Andy dandy super quiet, how would I, would you be to your mother-in-law? As bad as they always am all year round. Show you. The how, who got you to do it? Sometimes it's an inspirational speech. Sometimes you feel guilty. And sometimes because it's a sluice for those guys over there. It's a sluice for Uncle Charlie. It's a sluice for those prisoners, of, for, for, the, for the hostages. It, it, without them, you, you wouldn't be doing this, would you? No. They got you to do it. That's how it's and help for others. I, we've all been around long enough to know that sometimes I do so much and I've added so much and I need to come again. No, no, no. What's with the no? What, how come a country broker seems to say no? And what do you do when he says no? Do you, do you keep banging away? How are you supposed to feel? When it's, you're just getting a no, it's not helping, whatever it is, Uncle Charlie, whatever it is, it's no. Not getting the job, no. How do we deal with that? That will be next week. Let's move on. As we said, a little Birchus HaShachar. Let's start from the very beginning because it's a very good place to start. The very first of Birchus HaShachar. Fifteen thank yous. That's how we start our davening. I mean, we have modavi, don't know love, yigdal, get ourselves straight. And then before we start asking for anything, we say thank you. And what's the first one? Yeah, now from my sinner, thank you, my life stinks. But we're not discussing that. That's for teenagers, right? And I should not want to thank God. Yeah, but you got stuff you get thank you for. But that's, that's not our topic. But let's take the first one. Baruch HaTo Hashem. You Hashem, you're the source of everything. Melech Olam, you rule the entire world. And you know what you did that I'm thanking you for? You gave my brains, you gave my thinking ability, Bina, the, the ability to differentiate and understand, right, Chachma is knowledge, is stuff that you know. One plus one is two, that's Chachma, wisdom, right? Two plus two is four, Bina is to figure things out. Well, look, two plus two is four. Let's see if I can figure out, you know, what would three plus three be? I can figure that out from what I know. Bina, lahavchi, to analyze, to differentiate. Ben yom uvein life. 
between day and night, which is all the before should say, really, of course, means how much intelligence you need to differentiate between day and night, like the day and night, between right and wrong, between good and bad. Sometimes it's between right and wrong and good and bad. It's like a mummish day and night, black and white, right? But many times it's not. The power of the first bracha is, is we start ourselves off by saying, thank you that you gave us the ability to differentiate between what is right and wrong, even when I need bina, I need to analyze and critically figure it out, because it's not just a piece of overt information. Cigarettes give you cancer. That's, you know, that's easy. And non-cigarettes don't give you cancer. That's an easy call. But sometimes it's not so easy, and it's not so uh, uh, clear to be. And why are we thanking Hashem for that? Well, see, because, you know, if we wouldn't have the ability to differentiate between right and wrong, we wouldn't make any mistakes. Wouldn't that be great? We would never do anything wrong because we wouldn't be responsible. He could say that all the time. I'd be better off. No, you wouldn't. You're right. If you, make, if you know the difference between right and wrong, you can make the wrong choice. But you can make the right choice. I'd rather not have choices. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. No, no, no. The greatest gift the country of gave us is the ability to make choices which includes the ability to mess yourself up royally and do some really dumb choices and call day night and night day, which is problematic. It's just part of the process. But we thank our country Baruch Hu that we have the ability to make choices, that we have the ability to analyze and we're judged if we made the best choice that we could. Now, as everybody knows, Sefi also translates as rooster. I don't know what heart scroll does. Great for itself in the Talmidi, Talmidim of, of the Vilna, of the Bal Shem It says like this. Why do we speak a rooster? The rooster can differentiate between night and day. Shkaya. So no, the rooster crowds night and day. Shkaya. Right? It's all about We think I said that the rooster has that ability. No, we're thinking that we have the ability. Right? So, so why, use a, why use a word which could also translate as rooster to give you a, another, another concept? The uniqueness of the rooster is it starts to crow before the light of the dawn. Before it sees the dawn, it knows, it can sense that the darkness is ending and dawn is going to start, and it starts crowing before the light really appears. Night darkness represents a lack of clarity, a sense of hopelessness. The morning light, oh, everything's not so bad. The rooster teaches us even in the darkest times of night, we can see that light which isn't here yet if we use our ability to understand that Hashem, that Hashem gave us. We have the ability to live through dark times. We can live through night. And we can understand, like the rooster does, that the night is never ending and there's a dawn coming very soon. That ability gives us the power to make it through our night personal nights, communal nights, Am Yisrael nights, as we are experiencing now. So there's two elements to the bracha. One, I have the ability to understand. I can, I can make choices. And even though that means I might mess them up, I appreciate the fact that I have free will. I can mess it up, but I can be a superstar and a great person. It's my responsibility, and I'm happy I have free will to do it, and I have the ability to understand. Second is, and it's like a rooster. Also, it's really night and day. We have the ability to understand the difference between night and day and know that in the darkest of nights there is a day coming and we have the ability to live through any kind of night that a Kodesh Baruch Hu throws our way. Mirza Shem Taka, we should all see the night ending, we should feel the night ending, and as dark as it ever gets, you say that bracha in the morning, no matter what's going on in your personal life. Lahavchim ben yom uvein laila klal Yisrael, like the rooster, we have the ability, if we put our minds to it, in the darkest times of our lives, we can analyze and know there is light on the way and take a deep breath and push through. We should all see the light. And the next class, we will continue with Fila and move on to the next few brachas. Have a wonderful day. Spoos should be a spoos for everybody should have refuos and yeshuos. And Hashem Ozliyam Yitain, Shem Yavorich, Esamay Vashola.